who has been referred to as a renaissance man. He's the person behind the restoration of an architectural gem in the city's South Shore neighborhood that's been destined for the wrecking ball. A building many of you have probably passed by hundreds of times. It's now a hybrid arts museum and cultural center for all to enjoy, but Chicago's very own Theaster Gates is not an architect. He's a world-renowned artist and urban planner on a mission to bring back the beautiful architecture and culture in our black community, one building at a time. This is the usual vibe here on a Thursday night. Retreat at Currency Exchange is a reimagined cafe in Washington Park. Constructed to be a refuge for artists who either can't find work or are escaping the racial inequities of the industry. It's a place for the community to escape as well. This is just one of the many outlets for artists in Chicago's South Side residents, rebuilt and restored by one of the world's most acclaimed artists and urban planners of our time. My name's The Astor Gates. I'm a visual artist. I live on the South Side and I teach at the University of Chicago. Chicago's very own Theaster Gates. The building is actually like a steel structure. Yeah. And under all these columns and these, these, these arches. Gates grew up on the west side, and from childhood, he started to appreciate architecture and his passion for turning trash into treasure. The materials that were born to this earth have multiple lives. And so when I see old wooden beams or even handmade concrete or um, old stone, I don't look at those things as a nuisance. But I also think that when I see people who are broken and lives that are challenged, that I understand that like uh, restoration is possible for most things and for most people. His Dorchester project is a series of buildings that had been scheduled to be demolished. Gates bought them and brought them back to life. And that if I could commit to restoring buildings and creating a cultural spaces in those buildings, that at least that would, I, could, I could play my role. And I think that in playing my role, it also meant that other people wanted to live in the neighborhood again. So things went from destitution to like restoration. Do you see a revitalization of the South Side because of Fiaster? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's um, a part of it. He's a major part of it. A true renaissance man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mar Silver is with community engagement at the artist aptly named Rebuild Foundation. He's been working with the artist for years. I think that the Astor knew that this community was deserving of the cultural amenities that we see throughout the city at large. which takes us to the crown and glory of the Dorchester Project at present, the Stony Island Arts Bank. I would drive past the Stony Island State Savings Bank, and I would always say, man, somebody should do something with that. It felt like, oh, no one else is gonna do this because it seems impossible. If there's going to be a gathering place for black people, this should be it. It's located at 67th and Stony Island, a stone's throw from the future site of the Obama Library. If you've ever traveled this road, you can't miss it. It's a behemoth of alabaster architecture that looks as if it belongs among the ruins of ancient Rome. It sat vacant for generations until Gates bought the building from then Mayor Rahm Emanuel for one dollar. The building was slated for demolition. The demolition was very expensive. So in a way, I bought the building not for a dollar, but for like negative $500,000. Because it was about a half million dollars to just stabilize the building. And so it was like, how can we stabilize this building and then send a marker to the world that great things could start to exist again on the South Side? I think he knew that this site needed to be reactivated. Once inside this building, you're in awe. It's a magnificent museum, from its carefully preserved ceilings to the historic one-of-a-kind art collections that will blow your mind. But it felt like, man, wouldn't it be great if there was a place in the neighborhood, on the block, 
that could receive these things and then create exhibitions, uh, talks. So it may be that I'm both kind of a, a pack rat and I'm a kind of sophisticated hoarder. I am looking for a book. This floor to ceiling library houses more than 15,000 books from the Johnson Publishing Ebony and Jet Archives. The legendary black owned company founded by John and Eunice Johnson in 1942. My earliest recollection of Ebony and Jet was running past my grandmother's dining room table scattered across like Bibles. And it also came with all of the periodicals, all of the magazines from all of the different publications that they produced, including Negro Digest, Black World, Tan. There were so many, you know, Ebony Jr. Ebony, South Africa, you know, it goes on and on. Gems like this memoir written by the late Sidney Poitier. He actually signed quite a few copies of books that are up there. Shows a gesture of kindness from them um, that's personalized and that lives on in this collection. It's just amazing what Johnson Publishing had. And for you guys to get your hands on something like this, this is phenomenal. Yeah. In it, he writes for Johnny Johnson, whose initial interest in Simple first caused his books to be put together. Sincerely, Langston, New York, April 10, 1950. Just gives you chills, doesn't it? So uh, this is our smart room. A few steps from the library, a full collection of glass lantern slides dating back centuries, discarded from the University of Chicago. And the collection is, it's pretty interesting. It, explore its various continents and countries. Um, it was a part of their art department, so a lot of it is architecture, a lot of it is fine arts, mostly the modern era. Many of the slides within this collection are places in Chicago that are probably no longer here. A lot of my time is looking at how do you make discarded things beautiful? And then how do you give those newly beautified things the right platform so that other people can say, yeah, that's beautiful. And upstairs, the Edward J. Williams collection of Negrobelia is something to be seen. I see it as a collection of a deep dive and the portrayal of blackness and race in general. Is this an actual bill of sales for a yeah. slave? Yeah. But the collections don't stop there. This is the late legendary house music DJ Frankie Knuckles collection of autographed albums. Grace Jones signed a few. Uh, and handwritten notes. There's a few signed Whitney's in here. Tell me about the vault. It's in the basement. And we think that the basement at some point is gonna be like the most amazing swank lounge in the world. But Gates hasn't left out exhibits and collections by up and coming young Chicago artists. My name is Edisholo McKindy. I am a visual artist from Chicago, Illinois, and I am 31 years old. He has a commitment to create a gateway to other artists to achieve greatness. Uh, this is my workspace. This is where I, you know, look at magazines, look at all my source material. And hopefully, they will respond in kind. My collage style, I like to get rid of a lot of the background noise, which plays into like what I I'm trying to say. I'm trying to get as much glue on every crevice of this image. A lot of the collages that I made in that show, I made admiring the Arts Bank from a distance. You know, like all the work that, all the community work that's done, it's truly an honor. Okay. The exhibition space that we have downstairs is really an attempt at creating the kind of spaces that young artists of color need to do great things. If I can support strangers and people I've never met and create this kind of venue for a general public, and I'm gonna have high standards no matter where I am, I think I got that from my mom. The Astor Gates, he's one of Chicago's very own. And thank you for finally meeting me. <laughs> You're so sweet. 
it wasn't easy catching up with Gates. He's working on several projects at any given time. Right now, it's a Serpentine Pavilion in London, England, as well as an exhibition at the Mississippi Art Museum. However, Chicago remains his home. He lives and works in the studio right in the South Shore neighborhood. And much thanks to photojournalist Kevin Dolman, put a whole lot of hard work and talent into making this piece happen. What an endeavor. What a place to yeah. see. I'm sure you can spend a lot of time. In oh, there. yes. Yeah.